in this video, let's go ahead and simplify some cube roots. And what I'm going to do is work through these four examples and hopefully the explanation can be helpful for you. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. So remember when we want to simplify the cube root, we want to be able to identify anything being raised to the third power. We can take the cube root of, and again, we can take the cube root of something being negative because negative times negative times a negative is going to be a negative. So it follows the definition here of a cube root, something multiplied by itself three times. So what we want to do is look for cube numbers, numbers that can be multiplied by themselves three times. Now this example, I can recognize this to be a four to the third power, but it's also negative. So what I'm going to want to do is just kind of rewrite this as a negative four cubed, right? Because negative four times negative four times negative four is indeed a 64. So now that I have the cube root of negative four raised to the third power, I know that the cube root and being raised to the third power are now inverse operations. So therefore my final answer is just going to be a negative four. So when we're looking at numbers, what we want to do is what number multiplied by itself three times. Now we have a problem like number two, where we have numbers and variables. What I like to do is just separate everything using the product rule of radical. Basically mean I can separate each one of these values under its own cube root because they're all separated by multiplication. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rewrite this as the cube root of eight times the cube root of a cubed times the cube root of b to the 12th times the cube root of c to the 15th. Now remember our goal is to rewrite everything raised to the third power. So we want to see, you know, can I rewrite eight raised to the third power? And thankfully I recognize that two times two times two is going to equal an eight. So therefore I'm just going to rewrite it, even though you could probably simplify that just as a two, but I just want to show you how we recognize this is going to equal a two, right? Well, what about a, what about in this case? You can see that this is already being raised to the third power. So we're good with this problem. Now, when we're looking for B to the 12th, here comes a little bit of an issue because how can I rewrite B to the 12th power as something raised to the third power? And the way we're going to do that is using what we call the power rule. Remember any exponent raised to a power, you just multiply that. So can I rewrite B to the 12th as a product of three? And indeed I can four times three is going to equal 12. The way that I'm going to write this as the cube root of B to the fourth power cubed. And again, I'm got to make sure the three is on the outside because that's what I need for simplifying. And I can use the same logic here for C to the 15th. I can rewrite this as a five times three. So therefore I'll simplify that as the cube root of C to the fifth cubed. Okay. Now comes into the fun part where we can actually just simplify each of these separately. So the cube root of two cubed is just going to be a two. The cube root of a cubed is just going to be an a. The cube root of B to the fourth cubed is just going to be a B to the fourth. And the cube root of C to the fifth cubed is just going to be a C to the fifth. Now I can just kind of group everything a little bit together. That's a 2a b to the fourth c to the fifth. Now this next example, we have a number in front, but again, I don't really care about the number in front. That is just multiplying everything. And again, if you want to be able to leave that all on its own and just simplify this just as it is, then go ahead and do that. But I'm just going to leave that two there and, and just multiplying by my whole answer. Now, again, I'm going to separate my numbers and with my variables. So I'll have the cube root of 24 and then do the cube root of M to the fourth and N to the fifth. Now you could separate them into their own, but again, in this case, I'm just going to leave them under their own radical as my variable section. Now 24 is not a cube number. So I want to be able to see, well, can I rewrite this as a product of a cube number? And if you look back in our last example, we had eight was a cube number and eight evenly divides it to 24. So therefore I can rewrite this as a two times the cube root of eight times three. And the same thing I'm going to want to look for M to the fourth and N to the fifth. Those are not cube numbers, but can I rewrite them as rate being raised to the third power? And indeed I can, I can rewrite this here as a M cubed times M, right? Using the product rule, you add the powers, which is give you M to the fourth. And the same thing I can do here. I can rewrite this as a N cubed times a N squared. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these radicals and I'm only stuff I can take being raised to the third power. So what I have here is a two times a cube root times a cube root of eight, right? A cube root eight, which can be written as a two cube, just so we can visualize, see what's going on. I can't take the cube root of three. So I'm going to leave that out. The next term that I know I can take the cube root of is going to be an M to the third power. And then I also have a N to the third power. Now I'm going to multiply that by everything that I cannot take the cube root of, which I'll have the cube root of, let's see, we have a three, we have an M and we have an N squared. So basically what I'm doing here is just separating the terms that we can take the cube root of, right? Which is being raised to the third power and the stuff we cannot take the cube root of. Now, in this case, what I'll have is a two times cube root of two is going to be a two M cubed N cubed times the cube root of three M N squared, which now I can just simplify this to a four M cubed N cubed cube root of three M N squared. And this example is going to be very similar to the first example. The only difference here is now we have a quantity being raised to the 16th power, which is fine. We can treat that just like it's a variable or as a number. We want that 16 to be raised to the third power. That's our main goal here. Now for the negative 54, we remember we can take the cube root of negative numbers. We just want to think of what cube number evenly divides into a 54. And quickly, I 
I recognize that 27 is a square number and that's going to go into 54 two times. So I can recognize this as a negative 27 times two. And then I'm going to multiply this times the Q root. Okay. So now I've separated my numbers with my variables. And now what I want to be able to do is again, just rewrite something in terms to the third power. Well, again, negative 27, I can rewrite that as a negative three cubed. Now over here, raising to the 16th power, that's a lot. I don't want to write three X cubed times three X cubed times three X cubed all the way to 16. I want to use the power rule to get really, really close to the 16th power. So if I think about what number I can multiply by three, that's going to give me really close to 16 would be 15. So what I'm going to be able to do is use the product and the power rule to be able to go ahead and simplify this. So I can rewrite this as a cube root three X raised to the fifth power cubed. Now that's going to give me a three X to the 15th. And then just to get one more, now I'll just multiply by three X to the first power. Now, again, what I'm going to do is just break up what I can take the cube root of and what I cannot take the cube root of. So I have a cube root of a negative three cubed times. I can take the cube root of three X to the fifth cubed. And then everything I cannot take the cube root of is going to be the cube root of two times a three X. Now we can just go ahead and simplify this. The cube root of negative three cubed is going to be a negative three. The cube root of three X to the fifth cubed is just going to be a three X to the fifth times the cube root of a six X. As you could multiply the two times the three. Now, the last thing we could do is definitely go ahead and simplify, take a three X raised to the fifth power, which is going to be a 243 raised to the fifth times a negative three is going to give me a negative 729 X to the fifth times a cube root of six X. Hope this video was helpful. If you want more examples of simplifying the cube root, go ahead and check my examples down below or check the next video I have for you here.